Hello, I'm Ryan from Oozenist, and today we'll do another tutorial on setting up the WorkBCNC machine. We have noticed a lot of users are having issues setting the wheels, wheels correctly using the eccentric spacers or setting the belt tension correctly on the belt version of the WorkBCNC machine. Our manuals do go over doing this, however we just thought we'd best have a video showing how it should be done and knowing the correct tensions that you need for your CNC machine. The first thing we're going to do is set the wheel tension on the z-axis. So as you can see, I've set all the eccentric spaces to the loosest position. You know they're in their loosest position because they are marked six mil on each spacer and I've got the spacing away from the extrusion. So they're set at their loosest and then you can see that the z-axis wobbles. So what I'm gonna do is adjust these wheels onto extrusion to remove this wobble. If you over tighten these wheels, the motor has too much resistance from the friction of the wheels to move the extrusion up and down. So you need to adjust them just right so it takes out the wobble but it's not too tight that the motor cannot move it. To do this, all you need is an eight mil spanner. And I'm just gonna show you the procedure now to set them correctly. So first, if you fill the wheel with one finger, you can feel that it's quite loose. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put a spanner on it, on the eccentric spacer, and then turn it 90 degrees anti-clockwise, like so. This will tighten it too much, which is what we want to start off with. So now if you fill the wheel, it's clamped and cannot move with one finger. I'm going to put the spanner back on the wheel, like so, and I'm going to turn it clockwise until I can move the wheel with my, one, with my single finger. About there. Next, we're going to move to the bottom one. Just a note on that, you should always do the outside wheels first. So, same procedure, put the spanner in, 90 degrees anti-clockwise. The wheel is now clamped tight and will not move with a single finger test. Put the spanner back, back in, and now gradually turn it clockwise while keep feeling the wheel until it starts to move with my single finger. Which is there. So that's them two done. Now just do the same again with the middle one. So 90 degrees anti-clockwise. Oh, just hold the, the x-axis while I do that. Let's tie up the finger. Now clockwise, gradually while testing with the finger. Which is there. Now I'm just gonna quickly retest them all to make sure they're all roughly the same. That one maybe could have loosening just a little bit. And that should be all right. So now, if you grab the z-axis while holding the x-axis and try to wobble it, you can see now the wobble has been taken out. If you grab the motor coupler and rotate it, you can feel that it's not much resistance for the motor, so it should be fine, and the z-axis will still be able to move. You just have to repeat this procedure for the y-axis wheels here and here, and then the x-axis wheels under here. So just to repeat the procedure again, loosen the wheels till they're all complete, completely loose, and then one by one, tighten the wheel fully until it's clamped and will not move, and then using your spanner, just gradually untighten it while testing it with your finger until it begins to move. One quick note, on the y-axis one and the x-axis ones, each row of wheels has dual wheels and dual eccentric spacers, so you have to do the two wheels in each row at the same time and adjust eccentric, just eccentric spacers at the same time. You can still do this with the same spanner, just flip from eccentric spacer to eccentric spacer while doing it. So next we're going to move on to tension in the belt, and for that I'm just going to flip around the machine. So now the machine's turned around, I'm going to come to the front and adjust the belt on the left hand y axis. So as you can see, the belt is set up as per the instruction manual guide. What I have done is tighten this side so the bolts are tight, as you can see, and the one holding the T-nut is tight, so this side is secure. I've loosened both bolts on this side and just threaded this bolt on one single turn. This means the belt is now completely loose. So as you can see, if I touch it inside the groove, there's no spring or anything, it's just 
flat in the groove. So what I'm going to do is go through the stages of tensioning the belt so you can get it exactly right. So what you want, your y-axis, about 300mm from the end that you are tightening. And then what I'm going to do is put my Allen key inside this bolt and give it one full turn. See, this has tensioned it a tiny bit. As you can see, if I push it down to it's at the bottom of the slot and let go, it now springs back and vibrates on release. What we want to do is tension it to the point where that doesn't vibrate once it's been released and just goes back to its original position. So, tension it again. As you can see, it's still vibrating a little bit. Let's give it another turn. I'm doing this in about half turns clockwise at a time. So as you can see now, if I push it right down to the bottom of the slot with my finger and let go, it just goes back to the original position without vibrating. So that is the correct tension for your work VCNC machine. The last thing to do is just tighten this bolt into that T-nut to lock the belt into position, retest, and that is just going back to its original position so that is correctly tensioned. So now the left hand side is correctly tensioned, you just need to repeat the process on the right hand side and the x-axis. Just a quick reminder that this procedure is only needed with the belt drive CNC machines. Thank you for watching, I hope this video will help you to set up your CNC machine. Please like the video and subscribe to our channel.